with a bit of disguise, a bit of chat moving the hands around, you've got to get some nice impact into it. So if I want to put elbow, I can put elbow in from the punch. I've padded thousands of people in my career, and Peter Constantine is the hardest hitter by far. And I'm not the only one saying that. Today, we're going to discuss about the secret of his power. Peter is recognized both for his long story martial arts and as one of the fathers of modern self-defense. He is particularly famous for his double hip. The double hip is a principle you can apply to generate a ridiculous power even from short distances. It is well known that the double hip came from Peter's karate background. But what will be new to the most is the influence of Chinese martial arts in Peter's self-defense system. For example, in the 90s, he trained in Hong Kong with a hip chun, hip man san. And he told us that that was exactly what he needed to manage short distance conflicts. Very useful for him working at the door, in limited spaces. But that's not all. Chinese systems have a great weight in Peter power generation. The heavy hand is one of your secrets for power generation. Yeah. How to develop it? Yeah, I mean, like you were doing on the bank before. Mm. Um, you, you know, a lot of the open, where you find the open part stuff is all in the Chinese. So, um, lots of different, whether it's northern or southern Chinese systems, but northern Chinese systems, um, particularly things like Pi Gua Chuan, which fits with the Bar G, those two fitting together are devastating, really, because they've got big swings with, and then the, the, the thread that can run through all the Chinese systems is like the Iron Palm, where they're conditioning the hands. You know, the edges, and also then you see with the Baji Chuan and, and the others, the people are they're working on they train in the parks, so they're working on the trees. Bang, 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 bang. hitting it with the back of the shoulder. Um, but, but mainly, you know, that, that heavy iron palm, it's a, it's a feeling you have to develop. Is, is not trying to hit hard, but trying to let that imagine. And, and whether the Chinese have that nei gong, that chi that comes through, who knows, I can't say. All I think about all the time is, I condition my thinking, whether it's punching, slapping, whatever it is, that this weighs 20 pounds. And I let that drop as if it's 20 pounds. I accelerate it, but that's 20 pounds, whatever I'm doing with it. And then just find something to impact with that's not too damaging. Okay? Because the iron palm is all about conditioning. So when you look at the Chinese conditioning, then they've got the liniment that they use afterwards okay, to stop that you know, long term damage that you're doing to yourself. Um, but it's weight. It's, um, we've done it. Did it the last time, I think. You know where we put the shin guards on the arms, mm -hmm. and then do the slaps, trying to get that feel that weight. And it's really effective. It's effective where you've got people, those people that point with that slap, because it's so demonstrative. Once you've got that, and it hits the arm and might even spin them halfway around if their arms stiff. They don't want anything else. Right? They usually call this a day at that. But from here, you're ready just to, like before, you know, if you hit the inside, then that forearm, for me, coming down onto the brachial, onto here, coming off, off that side. I did that on somebody who was up on Thursday. Um, just dropped it in, and he's staggering. It wasn't hard but it just caught the brachial and he's staggering. And that's all you want. The next one is a free shot. So, but, but just, it's, it's that imagination that this is really heavy. Uh, when you, and the same when we're punching as well. You 
Now this, this is a chain, here's the ball, steel ball on the end of it, steel ball on the end of it, relax. And, and one of the problems we have in traditional martial arts, and we see it with people who come up and train, is that they're too focused on the tool being important, like the strike, the, this. Um, this, is, this is just a tube through which the body weight, people would say energy, Chinese might call it qi, for me it's just body weight. So that's the tube through which my body weight comes into the opponent, okay, whatever I'm doing. And I think it was Adam Meisner who um, does the is it Chen Star Tai Chi, does all the Fajin, you know, lot, lots of the um, good energy stuff. He said the difference with how it should work is if this is a hose pipe, um, I'm sending the energy through the hose pipe. Most people are just hitting with the hose pipe. Mm. That's the difference. It is a hose pipe through which energy comes. It's not, you're not using this as a weapon. This is just the way that the body weight is transmitted into somebody. So the musculature, as much musculature as you need, is simply to get the shape right, not to use your muscles to hit with. It's just, it's just isolating. It's isolating the kinetic chain and weight that you can develop through the double hip and other dynamics. Yeah, just uh, just working basically what we used to call the double hip and just changing the uh, the pivot point from the centre, which is like the old uh, old hinge, like um, you know a swivel door to a to a proper hinge on the front here where you're taking the weight into the into the pad. So what you're doing is really moving body weight into it. Most self-defence situations, this is the best you get. It's a sort of social stance, really. You know, you're never in a formal karate stance when somebody comes up and starts having a ruck with you. So basically, this is the best you've got. And from this position here, which is usually 18 inches, with a bit of disguise, a bit of chat moving the hands around, you've got to get some nice impacts into it.